<laughs> well, I'm here with my good friend Jeff Loudon, and I'm uh, really happy to be here because uh, Jeff and I go back quite a few years, yep. and uh, we've had some great experiences in the past. But Jeff, I'd like you to tell the story of what occurred a few years ago when I had made you an offer to hypnotize you when you were ready mm -hmm. to stop smoking. I worked in the record business, I, I met you, and you would mentioned one day you wanted to stop smoking, <clears throat> and I said, well, if you ever want to stop smoking, I'd be glad to hypnotize you. Just let me know. Yeah, it was an offer that was on the table really for a long time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we had worked together for many different projects and spent time together and, and had actually gone out and spent time in, in our lives together afterwards and just visited and talked about our work jobs in general. And Tom had always said, you know, when, when the time comes and you're ready to give up smoking I can actually hypnotize you and help you to give it up it's something that's a part of your life and and when you're ready to give it up let me know and that time will come and we'll sit down and, and do the hypnotism and it'll be a, a help to you to be able to to give it up for good and at a certain time I was ready to give that up and we had gotten together and and I actually had flown out for my job out to Los Angeles and I had a chance to go to Tom's office, and and I can I'll never forget the time when we drove out there. A friend of mine, I had a, an opportunity to go on the road and meet some some recording artists, and and she said, "Well, I'll I can take you over to that area. I'm familiar." So we drove over there, and I can remember smoking on the way over there, and actually getting out of the car and putting my cigarette out on the curb, <laughs> and then coming up to your your. Uh, your office and, and sitting down with you, but that was the last cigarette. It's been almost 10 years since I've had a puff off of a cigarette, Jeez. and I can still remember driving over there and putting that cigarette out on the curb. Now, do you remember when that was, what year? Because you would call me like every year on the day that you'd stop smoking. I think it was in December or something, but there was a date that you'd call yeah. me every year and you'd it tell was, me it was it another was year. every year in the spring, actually. Spring. And uh, it's been about 10 years and I still remember that and I still try to keep in touch because I'm so grateful to have the kind of help mm -hmm. to get that accomplished. Well it was my pleasure and uh, and then one other time you had called me or we'd spoken I was going to come out to Minneapolis right. and I think maybe you still were a little insecure about stopping smoking or something because you wanted me to re-hypnotize you one more time. Remember that? Right. I remember that and um, actually uh, the second time that I was hypnotized, we were able to make a tape, and I used that tape uh, in a very valuable way because, you know, we, I just didn't have a chance to run into you every day, and I could listen to that tape, and right. I could reinforce what you had taught me through hypnotism to be able to prevent me from smoking again. And the tape would actually re-hypnotize you, too. Absolutely. After you had stopped smoking, uh, a few years after Jeff had stopped smoking, something in his life occurred, something very, very dramatic, very traumatic. And uh, Jeff, I'd, I'd like you to tell the viewers what occurred. Sure. Um, about four and a half years ago, I found out that my eyesight was continuing to dwindle, and I had to go in and, and address it. And what I found through the doctor's help was that I actually had a brain tumor. Um, it had come from a cell at birth that had laid dormant and actually later on in life had progressed to grow to a point where it created symptoms that caused a lack of vision. Uh, it was discovered that the brain tumor was uh, considerably growing and throughout my entire head and that uh, at the time I really only had about six months left to live. I had to go out and, on my own, find uh, a neurologist to, who could do a surgery to remove something like this. They found and thought, because of other patients, that it was not malignant. It was an epidermoid cyst, and that it was causing to be able to put pressure on different parts of my brain. And uh, one of the first things that he asked me was, are you a smoker? Because if you are a smoker, it's very possible that there would really be no need to do surgery because I'd never make it through as a smoker. And one of the things 
that he did tell me, even though I was not a smoker, was I only had a 5% chance to survive the surgery. But I believed that it was worthwhile to take that risk and to take that chance to be able to give me more than six months. And that because I was a non-smoker, it was going to help me be able to at least have a chance to get through this. And four years ago, I went through 16 hours worth of brain surgery with nine physicians. And uh, it was quite a traumatic thing, and I was able to make it through it and have the dedication to go on. Um, and then six months later, they went back in to try and, and pick up a little bit more. They left a little bit of tumor in me because it would have been too risky to try and, and abort it completely. But in the last four and a half years with MRIs coming every six months, I was actually able to um, show that the tumor had not regrown and shown a great benchmark that within the last four and a half years, the regrowth has not occurred. So I owe a lot to Tom, and he's really helped me a lot, and it's, it's definitely worth mentioning. What was the surgeon's name? Dr. Stephen Haynes. He's actually continuing to practice. He's moved out to High Point, North Carolina right now, mm -hmm. and has offered that if I ever do need any kind of surgical help, that he'd be more than happy to, to continue on to help me. And the greatest thing of, of all things, what saved your life, is the fact that you'd stop smoking. Absolutely. And, and that's what I find so astonishing, because when I met you and you wanted help, I was glad to, to give it to you. It's great. I could help a friend to stop smoking. But to think that just by stopping smoking saved you, saved your life and, and, and helped you to have a surgery that wouldn't have been conducted if you smoked, you know, it just makes you really think, that, you know, the power of hypnosis as well as the power uh, of, of what the poisonous cigarettes can do to you. Absolutely. You know, um, so I'm just so glad to see you, and it's so great to see you, Jeff, because you look great. And yeah, and now we did a little bit of hypnosis. We're working on something else. Yeah, you know, which is going to work really great for you. Um, but it's just, it's just really neat to, to see that uh, that uh, that you're here with me, and that we're friends, and that you're alive and healthy. And you probably appreciate life than most people because you, you were on the table. And there was a good chance you would have died during the surgery. Well, five percent chance to make it's not a lot, but when you have five percent, it's something worth going for. Yeah, yeah, and this is great. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad uh, to see you, and we're going to be getting together a lot, and we're going to go do some ice fishing. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Well, the pleasure is mine. All right, thanks. The pleasure is mine. Great.